Welcome to the Landscaping Podcast. My name is Joel Barnett and I'm your host. And in today's episode, I'm talking with Western Zimmerman from Synced Up. Uh, Western was previously a landscaper for, I think he said, 16 years or thereabouts and started pretty early on. Uh, and then through the business he was working for, he started a software company called Synced Up. And that was basically a, a all-in-one program that um, helps job tracking and knowing your numbers and budgeting and forecasting and because everything that you could need in an app for landscaping and it seems like synced up does all of that so uh, i was fascinated to talk to him about it because i didn't know a lot about the program but it seemed pretty good from what i had seen and and weston is clearly passionate about what he does as well so he's a great um asset for for the company something i liked about what weston did early on when he was a landscaper was that he got really involved with the running of the business so he was doing budgeting and uh, doing their social media and doing things more than just landscaping when he was at the business. So it was similar to what Bethany Williamson did before she went out on her own. So it's a, a good way to do things to get really involved with the business that you're working for, whether you're going to go out on your own or, or stay, you, you'll either be better for it if you do go out on your own, or if you, if you stay on, you'll be a better employee. So there's no, no negative to that. In this chat, uh, Western will talk about uh, one of the benefits of knowing your numbers, because that's one of their big catch, catch cries and phrases that they, they use a lot. Uh, and one of the benefits is having confidence in your price. So you, if you know exactly what you need to be charging for a project, then you'll know if you can take any anything out of that price and how it's going to affect you directly. If a client wants to to bring your price down, and you'll have confidence if they question why your rate is a is a certain amount. And he also talks about the the two things people get wrong most of the time when they chart with when they work out their the rate they need to charge. And I've seen Western. Um, show up at a lot of seminars and events in North America around the place following different uh, landscapers that I do. And he mentions one of the reasons behind a successful business like the landscape company that he worked for was that they'd go to these events, they'd take all their staff to them, and then they'd work out what the best piece of action that they're going to take from all the things they learnt and zero in on one thing at a time. So you might learn 12 to 15 different things that could be helpful for your business, but you just got to focus on one and start working on that. So that was a, a good way to do it. And Weston was also uh, awarded uh, Aquascape Artist of the Year when he was a landscape as well. So that was a pretty cool thing to have won. He worked on um, Shaq's pond as well. So he met the big man. And towards the end of the of the chat, he talks about, I asked him whether the product is suitable in Australia, and, and it is, but he said the big issue, the, um, the roadblock he finds is a lot of people use Xero and it doesn't integrate with Xero at the moment are the QuickBooks. Um, but that's, it's still uh, something to think about because if, because it, it really is like they, they didn't, Western didn't pay to come on. I was just curious to get it on here because I think if if I um, make people aware of these programs that are out there, then people could benefit out of it. If you do use Zero and you like the sound of Synced Up, it could be worth looking at what it would be to change your accounting program to QuickBooks because I use it and don't have any problems with it. I would assume they do a pretty similar similar thing. Um, so, yeah, it could be looking into the pros and cons, basically. The the pros that synced up seem to do look pretty high. So, But Wes will talk about that in this chat. So there's a, a bit of talk about that and a bit of talk about his landscaping day. So hopefully you enjoy this chat with Weston Zimmerman. Weston, thank you very much for joining us on the Landscaping Podcast. My first question for you is, how did you start in the industry? In the industry, like my first job in the industry was with uh, Tassi Landscaping when I was 16. I just started on the crew, just as a worker on the crew. But before that, I had done some like ponds and stuff for my uncle who had a garden center. Uh, so he'd, he'd need some bodies and I'd go out there and help him run a shovel and throw some rocks. And we build some ponds. And even earlier than that, I was like 13, 14 in that time frame. And then even earlier than that, uh, my mom really loved uh, working outdoors. We always had tons of landscaping and stuff around the house. And I remember uh, plugging in our first pond when I was like six years old, I think. We kind of, my mom and I did it in ourselves in our backyard. So yeah, it's it's always been, it's always been uh, something I've been close to and involved in. Yeah. The ponds that you that you did in those early days with your mum and your uncle were they similar to what you see now? Like not quite as extravagant, I imagine, but were they similar uh, in terms of the ponds? Yeah, I mean they were your classic kind of 
I would call them DIY level water features. I mean, it's it's the, the type of water features when years later at Tuscan Landscaping we'd we'd rip them out and do them right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so. So how long were you at Tussie Landscaping for? Uh, fifteen years. Yeah. Right. Yep. And so, did you had you finished school when you started there? No, I had not. I was still doing some school. Um, I actually never graduated from high school. Then I went full time. I took my job on full time and never graduated. I'm not saying that uh, that's what everybody should do, but that's what I did. Well, if you it's it's worked out right for you because if you find if you find what you want to do and you don't need to go to school yeah. for it, then you might as well get stuck into it. Yeah, yeah, but uh, yeah, I was sixteen. It was before I even had my driver's license, so I was biking to work. It was eleven point eight miles from my house to the Tussie shop. So huh. that that was a grind for the first two years, and I finally got my license, and uh, life got a little easier after that. <laughs> that's, yeah, that's a fair old trek. Yeah. <laughs> so what sort of did you like start at the bottom, work your way up there? What sort of how yeah. did the progression go there? I was the new guy on the crew and uh, kind of the progression was I, after I was on the crew for a while, I took, I, w I became a service tech for all the water features, like all the water feature maintenance. I was responsible for all the service and the cleanups and the, you know, replacing people's pumps if they went out, that kind of thing. And then I went to Romania for two years. That's where I met my wife. We got married over there. And uh, when I came back, I started running a crew. I was a crew leader on a crew. And that's what I did then the rest of my time at Tassi. Uh, for going on eight, 10 years, something like that. So yeah, it was, it was, and, and during that time, I, 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 would, I was, I started doing more than just running the crew. I wanted to do things, you know, year round. So I kind of started doing more marketing stuff, content stuff. I got into producing videos and all of that. And so I eventually kind of had dual positions, crew leader and marketing director at Tyson Landscaping. And I managed all the marketing, built the website, did all the content, did the YouTube channel, all of that stuff. Did that for a number of years. And uh, eventually got to the point where I was doing those two things and uh, starting synced up. So yeah, right. it's been a grind. And you I imagine you'd be pretty busy during that time. Yeah. Yeah. It's I've all, it, it, I've always probably worked a little bit too much, but yeah. it's uh, it's uh, I'd rather have it that way than be lazy. <laughs> yeah. What size crew did Tussie landscaping have? Uh, when I started, it was probably, it was probably six or seven of us total. That was in 2007. And then now they're like 24 or 25, something like that. Yeah. So were you seeing the way they were doing business and that sort of thing? Like, did you see how they were quoting so you could, and like what, how, how they were running their business? Yeah. So when I started there, they were kind of in the early stages of they weren't even a million dollar business yet. And they were in the early stages of kind of figuring out the whole know your numbers thing, budgeting, quoting properly. And uh, I started with spreadsheets with Charles Vanderkoy, went to some of his seminars and then stumbled across while well, then we were using other softwares for like just scheduling stuff. Like when I was doing the service tech stuff, like I was told, telling you, like it was completely on paper in my head. It was a disaster. So we started working more towards systems and and figuring out better, more efficient processes for how we handle things and how we how we do things. And in that whole kind of season, we were you know solving the know your numbers problem. Uh, we were getting more process oriented, and we started using different different products, different services, and you know we kind of burned through them. We used that one. Yeah, that's great for that, but it didn't still solve the need over here. And so we were living in this world where we were using three, four different systems at one time. And they all had their strong point, but they all, like none of them allowed us to work the whole lead through invoicing flow inside of the one system. And so that was kind of the the wish that we had. And a couple of years into that, it didn't take long. I was like, this is not just our problem. This is an industry problem, which kind of lit the light bulb idea for starting synced up. And it was, it's probably the most naive decision we ever made. We had no idea what we were signing up for, but uh, I wouldn't, I wouldn't necessarily recommend building custom software for your typical small business. You know, just the sheer investment of time and resources and energy and brain power and money that it takes probably doesn't make much sense until you're in the 10 to $20 million business range that it would make sense to actually invest into custom software. And even, even then it's a question, are you sure, you know, and underneath that, it's like, it's not worth it. Like get something yeah. off the shelf, adapt your workflows the best you can 
So what we did was not something I'd recommend, but I, I at the same time, I also had this kind of vision to, you know, spin off and serve the industry with a, a tool that the industry needed. And so that was kind of the the passion or the the vision that set the whole thing off. Yeah, it's amazing how often uh, successful businesses start from someone having a need for for what they're doing, and then they re- that like other people do as well. So that's why it's so successful. Yeah. So you're not just doing it to make money, but you realize there's a problem you want to solve, and then other people will be able to benefit from that as well. That's right. Yeah. Uh, and when you're at Tussie Landscape, I think it's Nick Conley. Uh, I think he told me that you won. Uh, I could even be. Yeah, I'm not sure if it was Nick, but he said that you won um, like a Pond Builder of the Year or some big award. Oh. Yeah, artist of the year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so, so was that on a particular project, or is that like an overall thing over the year? No, that 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 doesn't like that is um that's an overall thing. So like the past artists of the year vote and select the future artists of the year, and it's based on just their their not just one gold star project, but their consistent development as an artist. Uh, and you know, everybody can get lucky once in a while, but like, are you consistently building incredible stuff? So yeah, it was it was that was probably one of the my highest achievements uh, in the landscaping world. That was something that for about four or five years, once I kind of figured out, hey, you know, once I saw the award and I saw the type of people that were winning that award, I was like, I want that thing, <laughs> and I full on, I full on uh, made it my mission to uh, work toward achieving that, and got lucky. Like it's. Um, there's really, there's a lot of talented palm builders out there. And it's also like, now that we, now that, you know, I'm in that artist of the year club and we're, you know, voting in future artists of the year, there's a lot of talented artists out there that maybe are, you know, you'd think, oh, I mean, they they deserve recognition, but one person, you know, has to be selected. So yeah, it was a very, in fact, I have the, I have the trophy right here on my, it's kind of a funky, funny looking trophy. <laughs> that is an awesome looking trophy. It's a frog doing a, looks like a gymnastics maneuver. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> I'm doing a split. I, so I would want to win it just to get that trophy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, that was fun, and and the, and the group of artists of the year guys are, are a blast, and it afforded us a lot of opportunities. You know, because like Greg, the owner of Aquascape, will strike up, "Hey, we're going to do a project." Like he just did in 2020, we did a project for Shaquille O'Neal, uh, the NBA player, and so all the artists of the year got invited. It was an invite only to go down there and contribute to that. So you know, it's, it really afforded us some. Some really cool, some of the coolest experiences in my career. Yeah, awesome. So did you go there and help build Shaq, Shaq's one? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, if you check out the Tusky Landscaping YouTube channel, there's a series on there of that whole build. It was That build was some of the, it was the craziest build I was ever on because because of the weather. Like the second day we were there, it absolutely monsoon poured rain all day. Like literally my boots were full of water. Like you took my boots off and just dumped water out of them. Like it was just absolutely insane. <laughs> I heard uh, Greg say that he's, uh, Shaq's doing another one. I don't know. I guess yeah. He got someone else to build one and then he messed it up. So he kind of fixed that up. So are you going to go back and do that as well? Yeah, that's, that's, I mean, I haven't necessarily blocked it on my calendar yet, but yeah, I'm kind of planning to uh, next summer. Yep. Now, did you, have you met Shaq? Yeah. What, yeah. I got, a picture, I got a picture. I got a picture. He came out and hung out with us a little bit there while we were building. So yeah, yeah cool. Yeah, he seemed like a pretty fun fellow to be around. Yeah, it's it's funny like with those celebrity builds, like you never quite know what to expect. Like how genuine are they, or you know? But uh, Shaq, Shaq was, I'd say, he was one of the more one of the more authentic people that we got to uh, build a water feature for. Yeah. Cool. And so, who are some of the other artists of the year that are on that panel? Um, Jack. Harju from New Jersey, from Atlantis Water Gardens. Alan Decker from New York. Joey Genovese from Canada. Uh, John Adams from Nashville. Tim Wood from uh, Pittsburgh, not too far from where we are here in Pennsylvania. There's like nine or, there's, I think there's nine of them now. Dan Hart from Washington. Diego Fontana from British Columbia. They, he just won it uh, this year. Uh, and I know I'm missing, you know, there's, there's like nine of them. But yeah, they're they're all very, very talented builders. Did I Matt Heiner on there? Uh, not yet. Oh, wow. he's a, I'd say he's a contender. <laughs> <laughs> the thing with Matt is he has he he does uh, incredible design and artistry in his overall projects, but he's also been working on removing himself from the field in a lot of ways and just leading the team, which meant that 
some of the artistry of the water feature itself maybe grew slower because he was inv- investing so heavily into building the, the company, the team and all of that. And in the Artist of the Year Award, it's very much about the water feature, how you place that boulder as opposed to the overall yep. um, grandeur of the project. But Matt does some, yeah, some of the nicest projects in the industry, I think. Yeah, cool. Yeah, it's uh, I love that you've got that kind of thing, and it's not just it's not like everyone gets an award or yeah, it's yeah, yeah. it it, may, it makes makes it mean a lot more, I think. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Uh, so now going to synced up. So how did you st- start getting um, businesses on board with that? And was it, I think you were a co-founder of it. So who was the other person yeah. that you started with? Uh, Steve and Matt Martin, the owners of Tassie Landscaping. Um, I didn't have any money, so they put up the money, <laughs> and uh, and I. Uh, put up the late nights <laughs> <laughs> the sweat and, equity yeah exactly but we got started in that and we started in that in 2016 and where the where that all started was we were in that we were in that season where we're using multiple products all at the same time frustrated with the inefficiency and the double triple data entry and i remember coming home from my, my dad was in, te- in tech all his life and so i was comfortable around tech i was familiar with tech but I also like to be outdoors and creative, you know, so that's why I was working in the landscaping. But I remember coming home from, e- from work one evening and my dad was working on the back patio, uh, working on a project on his laptop. And I was looking over his shoulder and I saw all these graphs and stuff. And I was like, what are you doing? And he's like, oh, I'm testing some for a software project. And I was like, you mean you're just like, you, you're like, dream- you're like designing or building, dreaming up like how this should work, what it should look like, what data you want to see. And you just build it. And he was like, yeah, that's, that's exactly right. And that's where the light bulb went off. From then on, my mind was kind of going to um, how can we how can we pull this off? Because like I, I – and this is a little bit where the naivety comes in. I, I thought like, man, if we can build whatever we want, then this is going to be perfect. Like let's do this. And so what the reason I say that was a little bit of a naivety is like software and business logic is is really, really hard. Like – it's really easy to have the idea. It's another thing to execute it and build it in a way that is has a beautiful user experience, isn't clunky, isn't isn't confusing, works, does what you want it to do, and and is flexible enough to meet all all kind of different models and needs. That that's the hard part. <laughs> mm. And so you know the reason I said we were naive in saying oh we're going to go build our own is we thought we we're going to get a silver key to just unlock the whole this whole world of potential. And yes, you can, but it just takes a lot more work and skill and and time and money than than I know at least we had ever imagined. Yeah, there's a, a podcast in Australia listening to. He used to have a plumbing business, like a, a massive plumbing business, and he he said he started doing something similar. He wanted to make like things because he would get job cards and they'd be on a yellow piece of paper, so and yeah. then they yeah fill that out. But so he started making his own system. And he spent uh, 120 grand on it, and then woke up in the middle of the night one night saying, "Why am I doing this? It's a waste of money." Like I can just yeah, do something well, different. So stop doing it. And I can tell you from experience, 120 grand is is nothing. Like in the yeah. grand scheme, like it takes tens of millions to build quality software, and and ultimately hundreds of millions. You know, so it's just it's just uh, it's just that's what I mean. Like we were so naive, we had no idea what we were signing up for, yeah. <laughs> but we we're just too dumb to quit. <laughs> well, yeah, that, that, yeah, it's one of the things. Once you're in a certain level, you think oh, you can't stop now. You got to keep going. Exactly. Yeah. It's like kind of sink or swim. Yeah. But, you know, and, and, and that's why, you know, your your friend probably actually made the right move by pulling the plug and walking away because yeah. it, it, it turns into a massive black hole and you got to decide, am I a plumbing business or am I now a software company? Yeah, you Because know, mm. to be both is, I wouldn't say impossible. You shouldn't ever say impossible, but it's, it's not advisable. Put it that way. Yeah. So what does... So if someone asks you what Synced Up does, how do you explain it? Because I imagine there's a lot of things that it does. Yeah, I mean, it does a lot of things. So it's easy to kind of go down a bunch of different rabbit trails. But what Synced Up does is it meets the need of helping landscape contractors know what they should be charging. I mean, it helps them know their numbers. Like, what do you need to charge to be profitable? And then it also has a feedback loop of showing you where you went right and where you went wrong in every project. So you have good data to base your decisions off of and not repeat the same mistakes over and over and over again. The two biggest places that people miss knowing their numbers, using that cliche term, is they're not uh, charging the right prices, not recover, not don't realize the full cost of just keeping the doors of their business open and keeping the lights on and operating every day. And they're they think they're selling jobs for a twenty percent profit, but they're really selling them for barely break even. That's that's the one, like getting the math wrong. 
And then you can do all the work of getting the math right, do it, building a budget, getting your overhead recovery dialed in, getting all your profit and all in your man hour price and all that dialed in. You can do all that math perfectly, but you can still screw it up, which is all the math could be, be happening perfectly. But if you, the, the other way you can still screw it up is if you say, I estimated this job was going to take a hundred man hours, but it actually took 130 and that will equally wipe out your profits. And if you do that repeatedly, we'll leave you in that barely break, even barely surviving state. So what synced up does is twofold, make sure you're charging the right prices. The math is happening correctly. Then number two, making sure you have a feedback loop to know where you went right and where you went wrong and say, Hey, by the way, you estimated hundred man hours that actually took 130. Next time you do a job like this, make sure you compensate for that. And you're continually, your history is informing your future and you're continually getting better and better and better. And not only are your, is your math happening right, but your estimates of quantities and time and materials and all that's happening correct as well, which actually lets you achieve the actual net profit that you set out to achieve on that. Like, Cause I've, I've talked to landscapers that are like, yeah, I, I charge 20% net profit, but then by the time it's all said and done, I get five. I'm like, well then you never estimated for 20% net profit. You estimated for five, you know, so there's a leak in there somewhere. So the, my goal is what synced up. My goal with synced up is to help landscape contractors when they say, "I want to." I estimate for a twenty percent net profit. They actually achieve that. So is that go about by entering all their uh, expenses basically into it, and then working out how many yeah, days it, they're going to work? The first, yep. The first step of knowing your numbers is to build a company budget, which is it sounds maybe daunting or overwhelming if you've never done it, but it really isn't that hard. And, and when people sign up for sync that we help them build it. It's like a consultative kind of experience for them. Uh, it's kind of a done for you thing. Um, but what it means is what's your sales, what's your labor expenses, what are your material expenses, what are your subcontractor expenses, plug in all of your equipment because equipment, depreci equipment depreciation is one of the most overlooked expenses in a company uh, that I see in this industry, like that I see happening over and over again. So we plug in all your equipment that you own because that stuff's depreciating and that is a cost. And then, of course, all of your overhead expenses, insurance, um, bonuses, uh, the electricity bill, the trucks, the tires, you know, everything. So once you have all of those numbers, now the we have a budgeting tool that can, once we have those numbers, we can tell you exactly what your man hour price needs to be, what your net profit rate is projected to be, what what your overhead recovery markup rate needs to be. That's the really the gold answer. A lot of softwares out there in this space will give you, like you, they say they have an estimate builder. They You you build an estimate and you plug in your cost of, ten, of a $10 item, let's say, and then it gives you a field to plug in your markup. Hey, what, how much you want to mark up your cost by and pass it on to the customer. The problem is they don't tell you how much your markup should be to actually break even. And that's what building a budget does, is it tells you what your markup should be to actually cover your overhead and break even. Then you can add your profit. So what a lot of people do is cost times a profit margin and that's gross profit margin because you're not really calculating overhead in there. The correct formula that we teach is cost times overhead recovery rate. Those two together equal break even plus profit, net profit margin. And those three together, cost, overhead recovery, and profit equal the customer's price. And the overhead recovery is the big variable in there. Everybody, It's probably pretty consistent to say, yeah, most people are in the 15 to 20% net profit range. That's what they shoot for. But the overhead recovery one can vary dramatically because you may have two guys in a truck that have very low overhead. It's just the sweat on their brow and the strong backs and a wheelbarrow and, and a little pickup truck, very low overhead. Uh, and so they can, their, their, their overhead recovery markup rate doesn't have to be nearly as high. Uh, on the flip side, a company with multiple crews, a fleet of trucks and equipment, a big shop has a lot of overhead and their overhead recovery markup rate on that same one man hour has to be much higher to cover their cost of operating. So what can happen is two landscapers, one with low overhead, and one with high overhead can go bid the exact same job with the exact same outcome to the customer on paper and come in with two radically different prices. And that's okay. That's how it should be. Because on the one hand, if the customer wants to pay the bottom dollar, okay, go with the company that is two guys in a truck and may not be here next year. If you want the experience, the five-star quality, go with the company that is definitely there for, you know, for the long haul and obviously they have more overhead, so they gonna be more expensive but that's what you pay for. So there's nothing wrong. I tell people, stop looking what other people are charging around you, build your budget, and then turn around and unapologetically charge whatever that budget tells you you need to charge at a minimum. <laughs> yeah, the benefit of, of knowing knowing your numbers is you, you've got more confidence in what you need to charge. So if someone ever tries to talk you down, he's like, well, no, I need to charge it. Otherwise, I'm paying for your landscaping. That's right. It's better for you to walk away or go to the yep. take a day at the break, you know? 
you're you're actually I just had a conversation with another Australian actually yesterday about this exact thing that you can do all the math right, you know, all the ma the the stuff on paper can be solved, but at the end of the day, this battle was won or lost in mindset and in confidence and in head trash, and in the trades, you know, the small business trades industries. That head trash is a very real thing and, and people will self-sabotage and won't charge what they're worth, you know, and I have watched this happen over and over and over again for people that signed up for sync up uh, or you, you could do this in a spreadsheet. It doesn't have to be in, in sync up, but finally learn what their numbers are and finally know what their break even is and finally have the confidence to stand up to Mrs. Jones's negotiations and say, no, I've got to charge this I, it, I i can't do it for less than that I, I either walk away or we can adjust the scope of the project instead of the price of the project and the where the way i've seen this i'll just tell you a little story like i helped a guy uh he was signing up for synced up he at, once he was onboarded i said hey let's get an, an estimate that you sent out recently he got one we, we, we rebuilt the estimate and i asked him hey what did you charge for that what did you charge the customer for that job that you're actually doing in real life right now and he's like, he was like 12.5 or something, 12,500 for a little patio or whatever. And when we rebuilt it and synced up with his proper numbers, proper budget, reality, it was uh, 16 something. Like it was like 4,000 more. And his immediate response to me was, oh, I could have never sold it for that. And I was like, yeah, well, whether you believe you could have or whether you believe you couldn't have, you're right. But yeah. this is the reality. You sold that job when I when I plugged in the job that the number he actually had sold it at. It was like at right at break even. He wasn't making any net profit, you know. So it's it's funny how our minds play tricks on ourselves. And and mm. and and what's important is to just do the math right, trust the math, turn around and unapologetically charge that because otherwise, why do it? What's the point? You yeah, know? it becomes <laughs> an expensive hobby exactly <laughs> <laughs> but yeah but yeah going back to what you said before i think exactly the same in terms of what people are charging depends on their overhead recovery and their overhead yeah. expenses so because i've had people contact me and say what do you charge for this type of paving and like i'm i've got a shed a few like three vehicles so my and and the person asking is just a one-man band who works out of his house so like uh, what i charge is irrelevant to, exactly. to what he needs to charge like you can charge what i charge and you're going to make good money out of it but you don't need to be that high exactly it's a it's literally irrelevant it like what what i mean it, it may be interesting to know for interest yeah. sake I know where you land in the competitive space around you sure but you know it, it, it's it literally is irrelevant your numbers are the only numbers that matter to you mm. <laughs> you know and it's it, you know y y it's up to you to uh Stand your ground and negotiate on scope and not on price. And charging other people's numbers is a pretty good, pretty surefire way of putting yourself out of business. And 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 you don't want to compete. Like so, my my buddy that I was telling you the story about, where he we put the estimate in, sort of at the price he sold it at, and all that. You know, if he would have just negotiated on scope instead of price, made the patio slightly slightly smaller, he could have still done work for that customer and uh, still made profit. Yeah. And so with the synced up allow people to so all the employees to input everything as the job's building so that you can keep track of yeah. everything as well. Yeah, that's the big thing of the feedback loop, which is we call that job costing. That's the term we use for it, yeah. like comparing estimated versus actual expenses, profits, man hours. And so once you've built that estimate and you've got it approved, it's scheduled and you're getting ready to do it, there's a mobile app where the guys can clock in. They have all access to all the job information, like the pictures, the notes, the material list. Like it's like a digital job folder. Uh, and then when they clock out, the app's like, hey, I know you were working on this patio or whatever it was. And here's a list of the materials that was in the estimate for that section. Uh, what did you actually use? So they're documenting actual hours and actual expenses live, real time, from the field, via the mobile app. And that's what makes it so easy to view the estimated versus actual numbers right in the, in the app. Because, you know... If your job cost, it, it's actually not hard to job cost. It's really, you can do it in a couple minutes in a spreadsheet once you have the data to job cost with. The hard part is collecting the data to job cost with. And that's where the mobile app of Synced Up really greases the gears and makes that a lot easier and allows you to job cost in real time. Before the job's even done, you may know if you're off track or on track, as opposed to 
struggling to, uh, where's those paper timesheets again? Or let me update this manual spreadsheet. And then finally you have the numbers a month after the job has been completed. And by that time you're on to five other jobs since then. And it, it, the, the connection to cause and effect or mistake or win is so faded that it's hard to learn. Whereas if you can know whether you're on track or off track before the job's even done, the team collectively, both the team out in the field and the sales or the owners learn so much quicker, more effectively, because it's like your hands getting slapped right when you're doing the wrong thing. Right. <laughs> As opposed to a month later, you're like, what was that all about? I yeah. Have no idea, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. Like I um like I was keen to chat to you because I've seen you on plenty of other uh like podcasts and episodes and like you're passionate about what you do, but I didn't know enough about synced up, but uh, I didn't know it was that detailed. So it, and it's yeah, that's awesome to hear because so when you're doing the quote, you can be that's when you can be entering in all the materials and everything, so then you know what it's gonna cost. And then and then while you're building the project, you're seeing the materials that you're using as well, which will allow for right. it. Yeah, that's yep. yeah, it makes sense that a landscaper has built the the product because that's exactly <laughs> what people would want yeah yeah and so it does yeah. uh like uh time sheet does it do time sheets as well or just is that yeah. just a project yeah so it's a lot of things are happening all at once just by that one activity that i was describing so for example the employee wants to get paid so for them to get paid they clock in that's the time sheets but simultaneously the, the act of them clocking in is also recording the hours against that job so you have your job costing and it's recording all the data you need for payroll and it's giving you the data you need for estimated versus actual job costing and it's giving you the data you need for invoicing like it all that stuff is all happening and all stemming from collecting that data in real time out in the field cool and you said there's like a file so you could put designs in there as well yeah. so they can see the design and yep, basically right. any file yep so you can put shoot videos photos um, I don't, actually, uh, have you ever heard of the company cam? Yep. Yeah. So, you know, it's kind of like that in the digital job forward, you can snap a photo, shoot a video, upload it. And so if you bring a conduit underneath the sidewalk, shoot a photo of it before you cover it up five years later, if you're trying to find that thing to run a lighting wire through it, um, it's right there. You yeah, know? sure. Yeah. It really <laughs> does sound like all these multiple apps built into one. Yeah. 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 Exactly. There you can kind of see. That whole connection from knowing your numbers in the back office, getting accurate proposals sent out, but then also not losing that connection in the workflow from going out into the field and production and what's really happening out there. How many hours did we actually spend on that? Coming back again for analysis and invoicing, like that whole thing was what was, you know, there's plenty of products out there that did really good at the back of the house with, you know, there's one in particular that does really good with the budgeting and estimating. Then, you know, there's others that do really good with the front, you know, kind of field side of things. But we really needed that whole connect. That's why we call it synced up. Everybody in the whole team synced up, yeah. you know, as opposed to, oh, you use your program and we use our program and there's data everywhere. And we can't, we can't make, we don't have right, we don't have information to base decisions off of. Mm -hmm. Yeah, when I during in the podcast when I'm talking to landscapers, I'll ask if there's any apps that they use for for the business or anything, and I'll start, they'll often say we use you know app A for this, we use app B for this, and app C for this. And so, yeah, that's yeah fascinating to see how how broad it is. Yeah, I reckon there'd be a lot of people who don't don't even know synced up exists. Yeah, yeah, that's that's absolutely true, and that's what my mission is right now is to try to get the word out there. And like the thing that's exciting about me about this for me is seeing the results that people have when they begin using something like this. Like literally just talked to someone last week at a show I was out in Vegas last week where um, they've been using it for about a year and he's been in business for a number of years, like 15 years. And since using Synced Up for the first time this year, he's making six figures in net profit this is after barely breaking even and barely surviving for 15 years, six figures in net profit, paying himself a salary, paying off all his trucks, bonusing the guys, paying their guys better and living a better life mentally. Like you're just not under all that strain and stress and you're spending more time with your family and kids. And like, you know, that's uh, that to me is what lights me up and gives me the fuel to keep grinding every day is, is knowing that we can do something that has that result for people. And so that's my mission is to get to, to help perpetrate that result for as many people as we can possibly get um, across the world. Yeah. And that's what, that's what helps you um, 
yeah, get up in the mornings, being able to help people as well. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, sure. Everybody wants to make a good living and have financial freedom and, and make good money, you know, and sure the money's nice. I won't say no to it, but it's not, it's not, that's not, if I, if I was, yeah, this is not, if I was doing that, I would try to grow this business quick and flip it and cash a check and walk away. But that's not, I'm in this because I'm truly passionate about this industry and truly want to make an impact. And it's not to, it's, I know it sounds subtle, but it's not to uh, grow a massive empire necessarily. Although that may happen if we do this well, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I think you do both. That's, that's the, that's the goal. Help people and make money. Yeah. And you're helping other people make money. So no. Yeah. I, I want, I want someone to come to synced up and make a lot more money because of it instead of, Oh great. We got another customer that's now paying us some money and that's yeah. where it stops. Yeah. It's not that it's like, if you pay, if you spend a dollar with me, I want to, I want to help you make 10. You know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, the more successful people are using your product, the more people are going to use the product because they'll, they'll talk about it, get other yep. people on. So yeah, it just makes perfect sense to do it like that. Yeah. And that's that's slowly beginning to happen. You know, it's the the snowball effect of getting momentum. It's slowly beginning to happen. We have we're blessed with an incredible community like Nick's part. You know, obviously Nick told you about Synced Up, and people are talking and people are sharing their stories and their experiences, and that's uh, that's how it's supposed to be. And you're doing pretty well on your on your marketing. You're doing a lot of guerrilla marketing by getting out there on the on the beat because uh, I follow a lot of North American. Um, landscapers and hardscapers on Instagram and, and see you popping up all over the place at all the expo, various expos that are on. So do you enjoy going to them? Yeah, I do. I really do. And both. I, I love, I love it because we get to see the people that we see on zoom um, all the time in person, you know, yeah. and we get to go out to dinner with a couple or, you know, whatever. It's just a great opportunity to get connected and to have face-to-face conversations and uh, get the word out there. So yeah, it's, it's fun. Just got back for it. Well, we've had a, uh, we were in the equip expo about a month ago and we were in Vegas last week and heading to New Jersey next week. And then we're going basically on tour all over the Eastern half of the United States with Teco and Unilock. So we, yeah, we got a busy, we got a busy schedule ahead of us. <laughs> is, that, is, that, is that, do you do that through winter? Cause it's kind of quieter for a lot of people. Yeah. And it's also usually when the events in the green industry kind of happen for the most part uh, is in the winter because they get better attendance. Um, And we also see a big spike in people switching systems through the winter because of uh, that's when they're kind of saying, I'm not going to live through another year like that. Let me, how do we get better? Um, Or, Hey, we need to get a better product or a better system and streamline our processes or get to get our numbers under control better. Uh, And a lot of that activity here in North America happens during the winter. Yep. And you've also got the yeah, podcast you started about 10 episodes in at least the cost of doing yeah. business. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. So that's kind of, that's been kind of fun. Yeah. Uh, not, I'm not a, um, haven't really done a podcast before, but I'm going to figure it out. <laughs> yeah. That's exactly what I do as well. Just start talking yeah. and see what happens and then just learn as you go. Yeah. But yeah, it's, it's already, um, been fun already just because of the feedback and people, sending dms like hey i really got a lot out of this episode and yeah man that was a big gold nugget thanks for that or whatever like so my goal with that whole podcast is to like like you know like there's kind of this instagram we follow the people we love their work and all that on instagram and there's this kind of sense where we begin to compare ourselves against each other and it it looks like they have it all together and they're all perfect and all that and it, it kind of starts playing tricks with our mind and like, oh, we're the only ones with these challenges here. So my goal with the podcast is to kind of lift that veil and, and, and go meet these people that people look up to and respect and follow and uh, have a long form conversation of like, you know, tell me about the most difficult challenge you've ever solved and, and like actually get to the root of what the journey really actually looks like for everyone so that other people can be inspired and realize that I'm not the only one. And, wow, he's been dealing with that issue, which I've never, you know, I, I've, I'm great there, but I'm dealing with this issue. And I was thinking that they've got their act together because they obviously don't have that issue. So just trying to normalize the struggle and this, this, the, 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 the grind of growing a business from nothing and hopefully make it inspirational and encouraging for others that are following along. And have they all been um, synced up clients who you've had on? So far. Far yes, except for Caleb. Caleb Almon is not a synced up user yet. <laughs> Caleb, if you're listening, call me. But uh, so far, yeah, it's been mostly synced up users, and I probably intend to keep it that way for the most part, unless there's you know an opportunity like Caleb, for example, 
where uh, I know that they have um, a lot of people look up to him and it's an opportunity to, bring, you know, have a good long form conversation with him and, and just bring that value uh, in long form to them on the podcast. Yeah. I think it's a good thing that you got the, the users on there because it was, you can hear that they, how they use the app so and what yeah. what how they benefit out of it because it's there might be you know only 50 percent of it that they weren't doing so then net then they got more whole rounded way of they're doing things so yeah that's what i liked hearing that that there's people who use it on there yeah 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 it's it's been a and it's been fun because i so far i've been doing it in person i literally go out and travel and see them and check out their jobs and turn it into a youtube get some b-roll and stuff for a youtube video as well so yeah, it's, yeah nice. it's kind of a hitting multiple words with one stone and there was on uh, on the first episode, you actually mentioned something that Caleb Orman talks about, and this is in relation to the like the expo events that you go to and the like equip expo. When you're hearing people talking about stuff, um, what did you say? Oh, you might learn 15 things at at those events, but you just want to take away one of them and start working on it now, so it's not so overwhelming. Because when you go yeah. into these information sessions, you'll learn a heap of stuff, but you just want to work on one thing at a time and start working on it straight away. Hundred percent. I when I look back at my time with Tussie Landscaping, like Tussie, Tussie literally was founded the year I was born. They're like a thirty-some year old company. A lot of people look up to Tussie Landscaping as like, oh wow, that's a model for what I'd like my business to be one day. Which you know, great. It is a great business model to follow. Like they they really have incredible culture, incredible team, incredible product, and profitable. You know, all at the same time. So it's a beautiful uh, model to follow. But you have to remember that that business is 30 years old and what I, and it doesn't have to take 30 years for you. That's not the, it's not the idea I'm trying to convey here, but what I am trying to convey is like what they did and what I believe to be a huge contributing factor to their growth and their success was they invested into going to these teachings and trainings and using these products and learning these things, going to these shows. But what happened when they, on the way back from those shows, we'd all kind of have a conversation Oh, and not just the owners, like the team would have a conversation, which by the way, fun point there, they took the team, which is a, if you're going to the show by yourself as the owner, take your team, invest into your people. If you want long haul people, uh, you've got to invest into them. And that's a great way to do it is, is take them, pay them while you're taking them, you know, and then ask their opinion of, Hey, what do you think we should do next year for, or what did you learn here that you'd like to take home with you in practice? And that's how you're going to develop this sense of autonomy and this culture and this personal development and everybody's getting better and everybody's growing and everybody's making more money uh, is uh, it's, is is a team effort instead of a top down, but that, that there's a little bit of a tangent. What I was getting to was what you were saying, which is, yeah, you see 15 things, make yourself all agree on the top thing, the one thing you're going to implement and don't try to implement any other thing until that one thing is ingrained in your company and there's a habit. Because if you try to tackle six things at once, you're going to run out of willpower. It's 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 you're going to be overwhelmed, and and you'll have an emotional hangover, and and you'll be right back to square one. You know, so slow incremental steps of growth, one percent better every day, is the uh, is the secret there. That that I look back on my time at Tessie Landscaping, you know, like that's absolutely what they did, and it's absolutely uh, helped them grow grow in a stable, profitable sustainable way yeah and then talking about doing the one percent things you're i've seen you just started the the 75 hard uh, oh yes program. you must follow me on instagram <laughs> yeah i can't believe you started that just as we're about to start winter yeah <laughs> me yeah because part, part of that program is you have to do two uh, 45 minute workouts a day and one of them yeah. has to be outside that's right and i've been doing both of them outside i've just been oh. loving getting out there in the fresh air and i've never I've always kind of wanted to do it, but I've never done it because of the 90 minutes a day that you, you that's been, the water, the diet and all that. That's been, that, that's not hard for me. Like it, it, the, the 90 minutes a day is the big thing, but uh, you know, at the end of the day, there's never is a perfect time and just suck it up and go do it, you know? And I got kind of egged on by one of our synced up users at the Vegas show last week. He was like, I was thinking about doing it. I'm like, yeah, I was, I was thinking about it too. It's like, let's do it. And we were, looked at each other like all right i'm doing it just ripping off the band-aid I'm, I'm not gonna think about this i'm just gonna do it and so then i immediately posted on on instagram like hey i'm doing this so i can't back out anymore because i know what'll happen if i don't tell anybody i'll back yeah. out <laughs> yeah so are you, are you are you a big reader anyway yeah i've probably read a lot more in the last year or two than i have in the 10 years before that but yeah, yeah i've, I've 
I've got two or three books going I don't, uh, at any given time. Well, I kind of have an audio book that I listen to while I'm doing my my workouts and stuff. And then I, you know, with the 75 hard thing, you got to do 10, like audio books don't count. So I'm, I'm working through a paper book as well right now. With, on the books thing, have you ever have you ever read the uh, Extreme Ownership book by Jocko Willink? I've heard a lot about it, but I've not, no, I haven't read it. But I've heard a lot of people reviewing it. That book trained new brain waves in my brain. Like it, it, it fundamentally shifted how I thought. It's, it's, if you haven't ever read it, I'd recommend you read it. It it is incredible. Um, I think I read, I think I, I listened to it twice on audio and it's, it's like, I should do it again. It's been a couple of years since I've read it, but it's just the concept of, of extreme ownership. It's my, it's, you know, if your guys are screwing up, it it's, it's some way it's my fault. Like I didn't set them up to succeed or whatever. And just like we, as I don't know, it just seems so easy. And so hu- like a human tendency to just blame external circumstances. And, and it's like our way of shedding any blame for a situation, which doesn't help anybody. You don't get better that way. Right. And so that's been one of the most foundational books I've, uh, I've read so far. Yeah, if you point your finger at someone, there's three fingers pointing back at you. Exactly, hundred percent. Depending on how your thumb goes, could be four. You have to go a weird <laughs> way. <laughs> exactly. Uh, are there any uh, any podcasts that you listen to? For, for um, or anything? Yeah, Patrick Bat David Valuetainment. Have you ever heard of him? No. Um, I, I really enjoy listening to him. He interviews a lot of people. Um, a lot of a lot of high profile and then people you've never heard about you know so it's uh i really enjoy the way it's an entrepreneurship type podcast so i really enjoy that one and then another one kind of a short form five minute a day type deal type thing is uh darren hardy uh better every day it's uh just a it's just a little five minute take it while you're you know listen to it while you're getting your coffee for the morning or whatever podcast it's also success personal growth leadership development entrepreneurship level podcast but it's it's for it's for anybody like whether whether you're an, an employee or have a job or are an entrepreneur or own your own business doesn't matter like it's it's it, it fits anybody and I, I get a lot of gold nuggets out of that one yeah yeah that's what i like about podcasts you might listen to one like in a different field but you might and it might be a 50 minute podcast but you might get five minutes of absolute gold out of it that you can yeah. yeah change your life with yeah exactly i mean there's fundamental things it's funny how it's also it's the process of like you can read a paragraph in a book that's very inspirational once and be like yeah that's a good idea but never embody it never do anything about it never take action on it and it's worthless so there's something about that repeated every day marinating in in wisdom and in knowledge and in growth Sure, I I can't recall to you every one of those five minute podcasts I've listened to now, but it's just the overall continually consuming and uh, consuming knowledge and uh, getting better every day. It's that has a has a profound effect. Yeah, yeah, you start to do things subconsciously. Exactly. Yeah, it changes the way you think. You know, it changes the way you solve problems. It changes the way you think about risk and opportunity and all of that. Yeah. Uh, So, what's the what have you got? Like a five year goal for for synced up? Do you have any goals that you work towards? Yeah, I do. So I haven't got, I haven't written it out like in a, oh, this is exactly the number, but in five years, I intend to be much better known. Like you said, there's a lot of people that haven't heard about Synced Up. I intend to like that we're a, I can say it this way, a household name in the landscape green industry community, you know, where we're, our mission is being furthered with helping more landscape business owners thrive and not just survive. Um, and when I say landscape business owners, I don't just mean the owners. I also mean their teams and their families, because what good is it if you can't raise a rising tide lifts all ships? Like, you know, I the I think the, uh, well, I'm stealing this from Greg Whitstock, the owner of Aquascape, his quote of the greatest satisfaction in life is helping other people succeed. And so I would like Synced Up to be something that isn't just helping. It's not just a tool with buttons. It is a, it is the vehicle with which teens and families and entrepreneurs thrive instead of just surviving like that is the north star not just building a better button right yeah um, but the five-year goal would be a significant player with some significant market share um right now we're ba- we're kind of a nobody we're very early in the game 
And in five years, that is, if we keep on doing things right, that should absolutely be changed to we're now one of the major players in the industry. And you um, you have Australian, like you've got an Australian sales guy as well, do you? I do not. Um, I do have a guy from Australia in Brisbane that works for me. Uh, we, we, he actually, we've been working together for seven or eight years already. But uh, we do not have any Australian customers yet. Toyed with a couple. There's really no reason why there couldn't be, you know. It's just probably the biggest inhibiting factor we had with a couple that we did talk to where they were using Zero for their accounting. And we integrate with QuickBooks Online. QuickBooks Online is much bigger. Xero is very, you almost never hear of it in the U.S. It's much bigger outside of the U.S. Yeah. So for that's maybe the one um, little bit of friction point. But outside of that, I mean, QuickBooks Online is available in Australia. It's the same thing. That's um, what I, I use QuickBooks Online. Yeah. So there'd be, there'd be no different us serving you as opposed to any other person in the U.S. Yep. Yeah, oh, cool. And uh, last question for you is who who do you think would be a good guest to have on the podcast? Oh, have you ever had Greg Woodstock on? No, but I just did. Th- I thought of him just two days ago. I think it might be worth reaching out. Don't, don't know if I'd get him yeah. on, but he's, uh, yeah, he's would, another passionate guy. Would, yeah, he is. I would definitely, and I'd be happy to make an introduction for you if you'd like. Yeah, absolutely um, amazing. Yeah, or uh, Frank Bork is another incredible um, business coach that is a wealth of knowledge. Um, I, and I can make an introduction to any of these people if you'd like, or Jim Wirtz, uh, Nick, had, Nick's, yeah, I'm sure you've heard of him. Yeah. I've had, yeah, had him on. Oh, you've had him on. Okay. Yeah. I think he <laughs> mentioned you as well. I think he, yeah. I don't know if Nick or Jim mentioned you as the, as a person to have on. I reckon okay. been Jim. Sure. Yeah. But yeah, Jim literally lives like half an hour from my house here. Yeah. So <laughs> yeah, it's funny how we're serving people all over, you know, and here we are in the same neighborhood. Yeah. So that's pretty cool. Um, yeah. But yeah, I'd, I'd definitely be happy to make any of those introductions that, uh, if you'd like. Yeah, awesome. All right. Thanks so much for coming on, Western. Area. Yeah, absolutely loved. Love your passion for what you do. And yeah, I think it's great that more people will get to find out about your product. Absolutely. Well, thanks for the opportunity to come on. And just, I, 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 could, I could live on these conversations. Like, I, I, this, is where, this is where I light up, where I thrive. I love talking about, uh, yeah, just business challenges growth opportunity you know vision and so thanks for having me on and uh hope uh, it was something that's useful to you and your audience